Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Talia Marcajani, and today we're going to talk about using heat to heal depression and other mental health conditions. So this is a story about when I was in a Temescal in Mexico on the Pacific coast. So I will die in here today. I thought to myself as I sat hunched and cramped in an oven hot Temescal or sweat lodge somewhere on the Mexican Pacific. The straw flap covering the opening of our sweaty mud hut was thrown off momentarily by someone outside, flooding our hellish cave with light. I gazed hopefully at the entrance. Were we getting water? Were they finally letting in fresh air? Was it finally over? It was none of those things. Instead of relief, they were increasing the heat. A pile of hot rocks appeared at the door. Gracias abuelita, said our Lido, Marciano, receiving a giant steaming rock with metal tongs and pulling it inside the hut. The change in temperature was immediate. The heat coming off the rocks was like fire. I struggled to breathe. Marciano is Spanish for Martian, and abuelita is an affectionate term for grandmother. Did he know what he was doing, this Martian? Was there even enough oxygen in here for all of us? I'm not related to these rocks, I thought. Gracias abuelita, we, we numbly replied, thanking the rocks and fanning ourselves with imaginary cool air. The hut was crowded with ten people. I had to sit hunched over and there was no space to lie down. I wanted to leave. Everyone else would have to get out. If, if I wanted to leave, everyone else would have to get out first. The combination of darkness, stifling humidity, claustrophobic quarters, and angry heat was almost intolerable. Sweat was pouring so profusely off my body that I had become one with it. Every cell of my body was on fire with craving for water, for space to lie down, for fresh oxygen, and for uh, freedom. Whenever I thought I couldn't stand another moment, the heat intensified. The tiny flap in the door opened again. Another grandmother rock from Mars? No, it was water, finally. My heart flooded with gratitude until I realized that the tiny glass being passed around for, was, was for all of us to share. I will die in here. I'll never again complain of ice and snow. Is this supposed to be therapeutic? When it was over, I emerged gasping desperately for air and water. After chugging a bucketful, I dumped another on my scorching skin, and I swear it emitted a hiss. I'd survived, however, as my body cooled, I realized that I'd done more than survive. Despite my resistance throughout its entirety, the sweat lodge had left me feeling absolutely elevated. The feelings of energized calm lasted well into the next few days. My brain seemed to work better, evidenced by an elevation in the fluency of my Spanish. It was amazing. Current research shows that heat therapy, like sweat lodges and saunas, can indeed be therapeutic. Subjecting the body to high temperatures can improve the symptoms of major depressive disorder as effectively as the leading conventional therapies such as medication. Intrigued by the cultural practices of it using intense heat to induce transcendental spiritual experiences like Native American sweat lodges and Central American temescales, for instance, a psychiatrist named Dr. Charles Raisin decided to investigate heat as a therapy for improving mental and emotional well-being. Raisin and his team in their 2016 JAMA study took 60 randomized individuals suffering from major depressive disorder and subjected them to a standardized questionnaire, the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, which quantifies depressors' symptoms. The treatment group received whole body hyperthermia, an average of 107 minutes in an infrared heating chamber that heats core body temperature to 38.5 degrees Celsius, which is equal to a mild fever. The placebo group spent the same amount of time in an unheated box that was nearly identical. It was complete with red lights and whirring fans, so it looked like the infrared chamber. It fooled 71.5% of the participants who thought that they were getting the actual therapy. After one week of receiving the single session of heat therapy, the active group experienced a six-point drop on the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale. This decrease outperformed even the standard antidepressant treatment, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications, SSRIs like citalopram and Prozac. According to a 2017 meta-analysis, SSRI, SSRI medications only drop participants two points on the HDRS compared to the six-point drop from heat therapy and the six-point drop from improving your sleep, as mentioned in my last video. The therapy results lasted for six weeks after one single treatment. Previous fMRI research has shown that heat sensing pathways in the skin can activate brain areas associated with elevated mood, such as the anterior cingulate cortex, which is also called the ACC, and is activated during mindfulness meditation. The raphe nucleus, which releases serotonin, our happy hormone, is also activated in intense heat through a skin-to-brain thermoregulatory pathway. 
Heat is also thought to calm immune system activation present in the brain of individuals suffering from depression. People with depression tend to have higher body temperatures than non-depressed people, and this is possibly due to the presence of inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha and IL-6, that increase inflammation and fever and have been shown to negatively impact mood. So this is a response to immune system activation in the brain, which increases body temperature. Perhaps heat therapy acts by resetting the immune system and decreasing the levels of inflammatory cytokines in the brain and therefore inflammation in the brain improving mood. Furthermore, when the body is exposed to high temperatures, it results in the release of something called heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins respond to short, intense stressors like hot, cold, and even fasting conditions. They have a variety of effects on our hormonal systems and our genetic systems. Some can reset the body's stress response, correcting the cortisol resistance that's present in the brains of depressed individuals. One particular heat shock protein, HSP-105, has been shown to prevent depression and increase neurogenesis, which is the creation of new brain cells in mice. Reduced neurogenesis, so the creation of new brain cells, in the hippocampus, which is an area of the brain involved in visual and spatial memory, is a risk factor and side effect of depression. It's thought that traditional antidepressants, in addition to altering brain levels of serotonin, may exert some of their effects through inducing brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, which is a growth factor that encourages the development of new brain cells and increases this neurogenesis. Heat can also increase BDNF. Conventional therapies tell us that depression is a disorder resulting from a chemical imbalance in the brain requiring medication to correct that imbalance. However, an overwhelming amount of research tells us that this is simply incorrect, that depression is a complicated condition stemming from multiple causes. Naturopathic doctors focus on the whole person. We look at how an individual's symptoms are expressed within the context of their biology, their physiology, their psychology, and their so social and physical environments. We know that when it comes to a condition like depression, every body system is affected. We also know that the health of our digestive and hormonal sim systems are essential for optimal mood. Naturopathic doctors have also traditionally used hydrotherapy, the therapeutic application of hot and cold using water, to benefit things like digestion, to boost detoxification pathways, and to regulate the immune system. Therefore, as a naturopathic doctor, having studied for four years in naturopathic medical college, the idea that heat exposure can have a profound effect on depressive symptoms makes a lot of sense to me. However, as a clinician working with mental health and hormonal conditions with patients, I found it difficult to convince my patients suffering from depression to try heat therapy. Perhaps it's because the remedy seems so simple it borders on insulting. So, you know, you're telling me to sweat for an hour and experience profound changes to a condition that's debilitated me for months or even years? Get out of here. So I totally get it. A lot of my depressed patients also feel like they're heat intolerant, which again could be because of the inflammatory cytokines creating fever, a low level of fever in the body. But research suggests that since depression is a multifactorial condition, it deserves to be addressed with a variety of therapies. So looking at diet, looking at sleep hygiene and making sure that you're sleeping properly, making sure that you're exercising, getting the right nutrition that's supporting your brain and body and lowering levels of inflammation and psychotherapy to address childhood traumas and look at cognitive beliefs and maybe to teach you skills like mindfulness therapy. Heat therapy can be another really important treatment. So here are some suggestions for implementing heat therapy without having to do a sweat lodge in Mexico like I did, which can be a little bit dangerous and I wouldn't necessarily recommend to everybody. So if you have access to a sauna, whether in a gym that you're a member of or in a condo building that you live in or a friend that has one, then use it. So alternate 15 to 20 minute stints that induce sweating with 60 second cold rinses in a shower and cycle back and forth for up to an hour. You're trying to get your body temperature to 38 and a half degrees, but of course, if you're feeling like the heat is intolerable, don't force yourself to stay in. Make sure you're hydrated as well. You can also go to a hot yoga class a few times a month. Hot yoga has similar benefits. Exercise. Exercise has shown to induce temperature changes that are similar to heat therapy and this may be why the exercise uh, confers the benefit that it does for depression and why it's been so well studied for its mental health benefits. You can also take Epsom salt baths. This is something really easy that you can do at home without any equipment. So you add one or two cups of Epsom salts to a warm bath and soak for 20 minutes or more uh, to the point where you're sweating and you, you can be able to tell this by noticing that sweat is showing up on your face. 
You can also try alternate hot and cold showers. This is something I'll recommend to patients to do in the morning to wake their adrenal glands up or before bed to help calm their nervous system down. So you're alternating between one minute bursts of hot water and 30 seconds of cold for about three to five cycles. So try any of these five interventions and let me know what you think. Uh, heat therapy is a very inexpensive and easy way to boost your mental health and well-being. Also to increase your cognitive performance, your memory, and your overall mood, even if you don't suffer from depression and anxiety. And also sweating is one of the ways that we detoxify our body and release toxic hormones that can be present in our environment. My name is Dr. Talia Marcajani. That was heat therapy to improve depressive symptoms and I'll see you guys later.